I want to look at the aerodynamic force relationship to pressure and viscous stresses a little more carefully. In particular, I want to focus on the pressure force, and we'll look at an example of the, the net pressure force on a wing. The uh, reason for doing this is that uh, the lift generated by a wing is really directly related, um, um, dominated by the pressure force on the wing. So um, we have sort of two purposes for this video. One is just getting more familiar with the integration of pressure in particular and viscous stresses um, on a wing. Um, and then the other is just to um, start understanding a little more about the generation of lift. Um, so um, with that, the uh, net pressure force on a wing. We'll take a look here at a wing from a planform view. So X is the um, uh, body axis in the x direction which roughly aligns with the streamwise direction and y is the spanwise direction and so z is coming out of the um, screen here and if we look down upon the wing then uh, from the positive z direction that's called the planform view and uh, I'll just also note here that the surface area when you view it from the planform view is called s planform so there's an upper and lower surface here. We're not accounting for uh, both sides. This is just look down on the wing from the positive z direction. And uh, the area that you would see is called the planform area. And we'll call it, label it S planform, like we have here. Okay, and then I can uh, take a cut through that wing. And that'll produce a airfoil cross section when I cut through the wing. And I can view that cross section in the zx plane. Okay, so now I'm looking at the cross section of the airfoil of the wing, uh, called an airfoil, and um, one length I'm going to uh, define here is the cord length. Uh, the cord length then is the we can think of it as sort of being analogous to the um, planform view, um, but now we're talking about the uh, two-dimensional cross section through the airfoil. So if I think of viewing the airfoil from the positive z direction. I'll see its length as the cord, as what's defined as the cord. And um, because the wing generally will have a cord which will vary as you move along the span, right? So as I move in the y direction, the cord varies. Um, we think of the cord then as being a function of the spanwise location. C is a function of y, the spanwise location. Okay, so we've just defined two important quantities the planform area, which is the area viewed from the z. Uh, direction, the area of the wing uh, in this case, um, and then the cord which is the length of the uh, airfoil again viewed from the z direction um, and that z, c is a function of y for a generic for a typical wing. Okay, um, now the um, aerodynamic force relationship that we've uh, discussed uh, in the notes is that the force due to the aerodynamics uh, is the integral of the pressure force, which is minus p n hat, plus the uh, viscous stress contribution, which we just label as the tau vector, the viscous stress at some point on the wing. Integrate that over the entire body. That gives us the aerodynamic force. And I'm going to define, I'm going to break that into two contributions, the pressure and label the pressure force A P and the viscous force A tau. Um, in the notes we use a boldface uh, notation for vector quantities. Um, uh, we'll use a arrow over the top because uh, in, in the notes I can't write in boldface very easily. So um, A vector um, is got a vector on the top for uh, my notes and in the uh, actual notes on the screen you'll see a boldface. The hat notation is to say that it's a unit vector, so n is a unit length vector. Okay, um, so a tau is then just going to be the integral of the viscous contribution. Um, let's suppose we want to look at the viscous stress, the net viscous stress in the z direction. So I'm going to look at the z component of a tau, which I can just find by dotting it with the z unit normal, which we define the z unit normal, we usually use the notation as k hat. So uh, k hat is just the unit vector in the z direction. So if I take the dot product of a tau with k, that gets me the z component of the viscous stress. Okay, and um, I can do that by just substituting in 
uh, by multiplying by uh, k hat, and I can see then the um, viscous stress net force in the z direction is the integral over the body of tau dot k ds. Okay, and I could define the same thing for the viscous stress in the x or the y direction, and um, uh, you know, I'd get the similar kind of result here. What we're going to pay attention to, though, is the um, uh, that look at more details the pressure force in the z direction. Okay, so a z p, and um, just like with the viscous stress, that's just taking the pressure force uh, and dotting it with k, and um, let's do that. So I've got the pressure uh, force, and now I'm dotting it into the k direction. So I've got minus p n hat dot k hat d s. Okay, and that would give me the z component of the pressure force. Okay, now I can uh, do a little more work, but what I want to do then to to do that is I want to interpret this result, this piece of this here. What's n hat dot k hat d s actually mean? Okay, to do that, let's look back at the pictures uh, we've been drawn, and uh, what we'll see is that we can interpret this as the surface area for that small little surface element, ds, viewed from the positive z direction. So um, here's my airfoil, and I've picked a spot here uh, towards the leading edge of the airfoil, and viewed in the cross section, the normal at that location, uh, I've drawn in green here. Um, now, of course, viewed from the plan form, if I uh, um, go over to the plan form location here, the normal will have a component which will be along the leading edge viewed from the plan form. So, um, this is one view of the normal, this is another view of the normal in that location. And ds uh, then is going to be the surface area, and again I'm just viewing this kind of in the 2D cross section, but there's a small patch here in the plan form view also, or there would be. Um, so now if I look at what does ds n hat dot k hat mean, well the k hat direction is um, is in this positive z direction, so I can um, draw two lines uh, in here, and n hat dot k hat would just give me times ds would just give me this surface area viewed from up above, right? So n hat dot k hat ds is the surface area viewed from the positive z direction. Um, it's greater than zero for the upper surface because n hat then will be in the k oriented roughly in the k hat direction. And then if I look at the, uh, from below, um, because n hat will be pointed generally downwards in the negative k direction, then from below, the lower surface will have a, a negative value. Okay. But the positive negative value is really just a matter of which general direction k hat has relative to n hat. Okay. And the other thing to note would be that if I were to say look from the leading edge direction in a where uh, somewhere in or somewhere where the vector is largely pointed into the uh, um, x direction, so there's no z component, then in fact though there's surface area there, I don't see the surface area when I view it from up above. So um, around the leading edge, uh, n hat dot k hat uh, can actually be zero. Here with the span wise, uh, with the leading edge having this shape, it probably uh, won't quite happen that way, but um, uh, um, that's the general idea is n hat dot k hat could also be zero. Okay, uh, so let's look at this a little more carefully then. I'm going to take this integral and I'm going to break it into an upper surface integral. So s body will be an integral over the upper surface and then an integral over the lower surface, which I just add together. So from the upper surface, I can call the pressure P, I'm going to label that with a subscript U to denote that's the pressure on the upper surface. And I'm going to replace n hat dot k hat ds with what I'm going to call ds of xy, which is the surface area um, viewed from the z direction, which would be surface area in the plan form uh, axis. So xy appears here. All right. Okay. So this uh, um, uh, integral here for the piece that's on the upper surface is minus the integral of the upper surface pressure times ds xy, which is the plan form area um, on the upper surface. And I get the same thing um, except for a minus sign for the lower surface, which is PL ds xy. But you can see I don't, uh, here I've got a plus, here I've got a minus. The reason for the plus here is that n hat dk hat dotted with k hat is a negative value, like I mentioned here. 
So that flips the sign um, um, of this integral. Okay, so the last bit of this is to recognize, well, okay, this is just an integral over my plan form area. Um, so I can uh, get to my final result here, which is the pressure force in the z direction is PL minus PU integrated over the plan form. Okay, now I just want to spend the last uh, minute or so just um, thinking about what all that means. So uh, rewriting the result that we just derived here. Uh, that AZP is the pressure difference, PL minus PU, uh, integrated over the plant form. One thing to note is that in many cases of interest, the lift direction is about in the Z direction, right? The angle of attack tends to be small, so the streamwise direction is in the X direction, and therefore the Z direction will be aligned approximately in the lift direction. So while I'm talking about AZP here, in fact, the lift uh, it is going to be very much dominated by uh, this quantity. The other aspect of this is that the viscous forces in general tend to be small in the z direction. Okay, so uh, that leads to the conclusion here. Uh, sorry, AZ, the magnitude of AZ tau, the viscous stresses in the z direction, um, is much smaller than the pressure forces in the z direction typically. Um, so the result here is that the lift is approximately equal to AZP in most, uh, in many practical cases. So, um, so this result about how the pressure difference um, is uh, related to AZP also is just telling us that the lift is going to be related to this pressure difference in a row. Okay, now. Um, we can go one step further and define an average pressure difference. Um, where uh, this average pressure is 1 over the plan form area times the pressure difference integrated over that plan form area. So I can think of AZP as being equal to the average pressure difference between the lower and upper surface multiplied by the plan form area. Okay. Um, so because the lift is about, is, is very much dominated by AZP, then I can say the lift is approximately equal to the average pressure difference between the upper and lower surface multiplied by the plan form area. Okay, and this will be important uh, because it's, this tells us now that if, say, we had a wing that kept its general shape the same, but we just increased the plan form area, um, then we would expect the lift to scale with whatever that increase in plan form area is. Or if I kept the plan form area of the wing the same but wanted to increase the lift, I'm going to need to figure out some way to increase the average pressure difference between the upper and lower surface. And this will become important here uh, throughout the uh, rest of the class. We're going to use this kind of result. And in a second, we're going to actually define a lift coefficient which uses this result that the average pressure multiplied by the plan form area is related to the lift.